I'm supposed to speak about movement and mountains. But we will do that actually another time. We'll actually do that another time. But all I can say about the mountains at this stage, my brother, my sister. On the mountain you will find the vision, but on the mountain you can find God, and on the mountain you can find Satan. Satan took Jesus on the mountain to see the vision, to see the vision that the Father, that the Father gave Jesus, and that is that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God in Christ Jesus. And the devil said, here is the vision that the Father gave you. All these kingdoms, he showed them the kingdoms of the world and said, I give all these kingdoms to you if you just bow down and worship me. If you just focus for a little bit more on me than on your father. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. My brother, my sister, you can come to the mountain. You can come and see. You can, will be able to see into your future. You will be able to see what God has for you. You will be able to see the promises that's laying ahead. God's prophetic plan for you. God's vision for you. But you could be standing with Satan on that mountain. Seeing what God has for you. Or you could stand on the mountain and like Moses be on the mountain and you can come back with the patterns, the patterns from God, the Ten Commandments and so much more. But you're going to climb a mountain. My question is with who, with who, with who will you stand on the mountain? Because from, blessed are those on the mountains, the feet of those who bring the good news. And from the mountain, from the place of stature, from the place of his presence, you're supposed to go into com the community, go into the education system, go into the school, go into there where you are working daily. And you're supposed to come into that place with a mandate from the Father. Go into that place with what the Father has for them. Hello? Are you with me? And even when Moses was on the mountain with God, and at one stage when God saw that they are worshipping idols, they are worshipping the golden calf, God said, I will give them what I promised them. I will give them the land Canaan, but I'm not coming with. And even for that, Jesus said no to Satan, but there even Moses said no to God. God, if you're not coming with, we're not going. We're not going for your promises if you're not coming with. If you're not coming with. Because for the perfect father, the most precious is his presence. Your father wants to be with you. Your father wants to do what he wants to do with his children. With his children. That's why he's, he desired more than heaven. And the new Jerusalem. The new earth. The new heavens is a place where God dwells with his children. That's, his, yeah, that's your father's desire. Now interesting, I mean, God said to Moses, I give you the vision that I, what I promised you, I will give you what I promised you. But I'm not coming with. My brother and my sister, you can go into a situation. You can so stand on the promises of God that God will give it to you tomorrow. Tomorrow you can have the blessing of God. You can have the promises of God. You can have the Canaan that he promised you. But he's not going with you into that place. God will always be in your heart. But his manifest presence. He can say, ah, but I'm not going with you into that. Not because you're going to the devil. You're going into the promises of God, but you can so stand with the promises. You will see that in your, in your prayer life. You will see in your prayer life how, how much of your prayer life is more, is more the thing of, God, please help me with this, help me with this, thank you for this, thank you for that, but help me with this, and, and I need your help here, and I need your wisdom here. There's a declaration of dependency on God. That's why you ask, yes, because your Father knows what you need. But you're asking because he wants you to ask because he wants you to declare that you are dependent on him. Amen. But you will see if you are running for the vision or if you are running with God into whatever he has for you. 
And when you're running with God into whatever he has for you, it's not like you don't know where you're going, but then so much more, God, your father will surprise you. If you are willing to run into the unknown, because if you're running into the unknown, there you will need God more. And God is excited about that because then you can come close to him. Your father has a desire, not first of all for that vision to be fulfilled, but he's going to use your vision. He's going to use your future for you to come closer to him. So he's looking forward into that day that you will be closer to him. You're looking forward, could look forward to that vision to be fulfilled. But the essence of the vision is more of him, less of me, John the Baptist. That's the way maker. That's the way maker. He's preparing the way for the Lord. And that's the attitude that me and you are supposed to have. More of you, Lord, less of me. And then I can pray. More of God in Bluefontaine, less of the work of hell, from hell. More of you in the nation, less of the rubbish that's coming from hell than the destruction. Why can you pray that? Because you pray that for your own personal life. That it will be more of him and less of you. Hello? Ah, are you with me? But it's about the Father. Do we have the first scripture there? Elijah saw this and he cried out. He saw Elijah going up. My father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them apart. What happened? I'm talking about fathering. I'm talking about fathering. There's somebody saying amen to me, it seems to me. He's talking about what? He wasn't the son of Elijah, Elisha, but he was a spiritual father to him. It was a spiritual father to him. And what is the fathering? We see it first of all with Jesus and his father. Even Jesus went to the mountain. Even Jesus went alone to be alone with his father. Why? Why? Because he didn't know what to do. No, he knew what to do. But he, he was so dependent on his father. He didn't want to say anything unless the father says. He didn't want to do anything unless the father does. That's just a copycat. You know, that guy is just doing what he like his father. He, he must be his own self. Yes, you must be your own unique self. But you will be your own unique self if you understand how to do what the father says and, and say what the father says. Then the father will bring forth your uniqueness. And the father said to Jesus, it will be the name above all names. Not the name father, the name Jesus. Every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that I'm father. No. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that you are Lord, my son. And the father lifts up the son. The beauty of humility in the Trinity. Remember we talked about that? The beauty of humility in the Trinity. Where the father says, my son is the name above all names. You, everything will bow before him. The son said, don't ask me. Ask my father in my name. And lay down his life to declare the Father. Holy Spirit will not speak from himself. He will only speak the words of Christ and only remind you and explain to you the words of Christ. The beauty of humility in the Trinity. I can run for my uniqueness and the uniqueness of my vision. And my opinion and how I see things. But the question is, is your opinion the opinion from your Father? Is your opinion the opinion of your father? Father God. Jesus said, I'm saying nothing unless I hear the father is saying that. Yes, you can have the opinion from your father. Because the word says, you have the mind of Christ. And do hold the thoughts, the feelings, the purposes of God. Where? In your spirit, reborn, perfect spirit. The problem is our soul. The problem is not the devil. The problem is your soul with your own opinions and your own thoughts and your own desires and your own purposes. And then it's a vision many times that you have for God. And you're excited about these thoughts, excited about these visions and excited. But is it from God? Is it from God? Get behind me, Satan. Jesus said to the devil himself, 
But he also said to the one of the three disciples that was the closest to him. Not the people, not the 70, not the 12, but one of the three that will open his mouth and what he says, Christ will build his church on that foundation. To that guy, Jesus also said, get behind me, Satan. To the devil and to that guy. Because that a vision, even the vision that you are sincere in that vision, can be so deceiving. How many of you got discouraged with things that you thought God is saying you must do this and it didn't happen? How many of you tried certain things and then you got hurt? Hello? Got disappointed, got offended. Because things didn't work out and suddenly when you were passionate about certain things, about leading people to Christ, about testifying, suddenly it's not there necessarily so more anymore. Well, actually we're supposed to grow from strength to strength, from glory to glory. What happened? Understand his heart when he says, get behind me, Satan. Because he didn't disqualify you. He didn't disqualify you. For the man, he said, get behind me, Satan. That was the guy speaking up after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That was the guy that denied Jesus three times. And he said, you're going to deny me. You're going to fail me. What about God telling you, men, you're going to fail me? When you say, I'm going to give my life over my dead body, nobody will kill you, Lord. Thanks for your commitment. Not thanks for your commitment. You will fail me. God encourages you to say you will fail me when you give your commitment. What is he saying? You need to be dependent on me. But you will see, even though you fail me, by fact, by truth, I will come and I will tell you the truth. Do you love me, Peter? Yes, Lord. Do you love me? Then I trust you. Do you love me? Then I trust you. If you love me, tend my lambs. Watch my sheep. Watch my lambs. Oh, man. He's showing the heart of the Father. There's a Father who believes in people. When last did you really go and tell people out there? Why? I'm telling you one thing, you're supposed to bring fathering to the people if you follow Christ. As the Father sent the Son, so the Son is sending, son is sending you. John 17. Father, just as you have sent me, so I'm sending them into the world. They are not from the world. They are from you. But as you have sent me, so I send them into the world. But we put so much from the world into our souls that we can think like the world. And it's still just okay that we can watch that movie and they use the name of Christ. You go and watch that movie, it's okay. But if they name, use the name of Christ, you better walk out. Or you can stand up and say, that's my Lord. Yes, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then sit down. And you wait for the next time. Who will do that? I will give you more than a, than more than a pizza. <laughs> that you stand up. I told you that, that story. And I just make as if you've never heard it before. When I, we had to get the, the registrations for, to have a permit to build a Christian school on a farm ground. You cannot just do that. Oh, and we struggled for three years. And later I went with some guys and we went to the, the glass palace, you know, and to sit physically from the one guy to the other guy. And this one guy, he was just busy and he was the final guy. And he said, oh, I'm struggling with this thing. Yes, yes. You've heard that before. And I thought by the second time, this is not going to happen. Who knows the story? Four, five. Okay, I'm not going to give you a pizza. And he just said, yes, yes. And by the second time, he just said, yes, I see you speaking to my Lord. I said, I see you speaking to Jesus. And he was like a type of laughing and 
he used the name of Jesus, I don't know, 20, 30 times, but every time. I can lose now this permit for the school. Hello? But I guess, yes, yes, I love him. Yes, yes, you know, he loves you very much. Yes. He is such an awesome God. And I was just, but I say, I hope. Well, it became less that he used the name of Jesus in the meeting. You can use, you cannot, don't have to say, you're going to hell because you lose, you use the name of the Lord in vain. You don't have to do that. But in your presence, you decide, my king will be honored. My king will be honored when I go in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I feared and hid the talent so that you can lose everything. Just out of context. But you hear what I'm saying. Ah, oh, please, men. You're supposed to represent him as an ambassador of Christ. But Christ represented the Father. So as the Father has sent Jesus, so Jesus is sending you. So as an ambassador of Christ, you're explaining the Father. Because the Father came to explain, to explain, sorry, the Father sent Jesus to explain him, the Father. So Jesus is sending you in the same way to explain the Father. John 1, 18. Nobody has seen God but Jesus that came the son that came from the bosom of the father has declared the father. Philip asked Jesus in John 14, 7. I know you write it down because, unless you know it. He said, show us the father and it will be enough. Show us the father and it will be enough. Jesus said, I'm so long with you for such a long time. And you don't know the father. If you've seen me, you've seen the father. Where you work. Where you study, where you are busy, you're supposed to tell the children, supposed to tell the people, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because why? They see that you believe in them. Because the people see that you're excited about them. Why? Because your Father is excited about that people. Your father believes in them. Who are you then not to believe in them? And just to be frustrated with people. If your dad, your father believes in those people, why are you just frustrated about them? Because your heart is not with your father. That's the first problem. Not they need to change and they do it the right way so that your frustration is gone. Not the devil can bring that temptation. God can bring you some people that will frustrate you. <laughs> so that when they frustrate you, he can purify your heart. Because he wants you to have his heart for them also. His heart for them also. That you can be excited about people that irritate and frustrate you. Let's say I can be excited. About people that frustrate and irritate me. If you have your father's heart. So go and tell the people, man. They've heard the gospel. They've heard maybe God loves you. But so many, so many, so many, so many don't know. Your father has an appointment with you. Your father believes in you. Your father is excited about your future. Your father is dreaming about you and him in the future. Represent and go and show who's the father. Are you with me? This man, he had a spiritual dad. And he called him, it's not like you must call your spiritual dad father, father. But he was a father to him. So as he's leaving him, what is him? Oh, the man with the double anointing. Man of God. My leader, Elijah. That's what I'm going to miss. No. I'm going to miss my father. Elijah is my father. And he's screaming out. Father, father. May you come to know him. As your father. For that is eternal life. John. 
17 verse 3. This is eternal life. That they may know you and the one that you sent. Who's you? The Father and the one that you sent. Jesus. Put eternity in tomorrow. Let While you are sitting here. And some think I've heard this. Or some wada 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 wada. It's okay. Whatever you're doing it will be burned away. When you go to heaven. Or some of you, you're sitting here and you're busy with the Father. You hear and you apply it and you're speaking to your Father. You're speaking to Jesus. And this moment here in church has eternal value in your life. Because knowing the Father, knowing the Son, and you are interacting with the Father, interacting with the Son. Now, what you're doing has eternal value. Or now, when you die, it will be burnt away as rubbish. Put eternal value in your day, in this week, in tomorrow. By doing life tomorrow with your Father. Doing life tomorrow with Jesus, your King. Amen. Oh, Are you here? Please, man. Please, man. And then you will know also how to be a Father. If you come to know Him, spiritual fathering and your earthly Father... Is there to teach you something about God as Father. God decided that you will call your physical dad or spiritual dad. You will, they will be your fathers. To serve the purpose of coming to know Him as Father. Now if God says, honor your father and your mother. And then you'll inherit the promises. How can you honor? Because you don't, won't believe it. They make a lot of mistakes. Who has a dad or a mom that didn't make any mistakes? Who of you who are dads and moms? Oh man, you are so aware of your mistakes. So many times. So many times. But still, God said, if you know how to do that, I will let you inherit. Because in the process of that, you're supposed to come to know me why do you honor your father and your mother because they are perfect no because the one who told you to honor them is perfect because the father who told you you will honor your mom and your dad he is perfect and he will reward you when you obey him don't honor your father so that he can change don't honor your father because you think he's worthy of honor you're not the king of kings. You honor your father and your mother because God, the perfect father, said you will do that. And then he will fulfill his promise. He will take you to the land Canaan. Therefore, Moses, go to Pharaoh and say, let, my, let God's people go because God wants to fulfill his promise for generation after generation that he wants to give his children that promise Canaan. No. He didn't say that. You can remind God of his promises. This, that's one scripture. But read it in context. God promised for generations. I will give you Canaan. I will give you Canaan. But when he go to the ones that enslave you. When God is speaking to the slavery of fear. The slavery of lust. The slavery of rubbish in your life. The slavery of, of uh, uh, whatever who you want to call it. The spirit of what is twist. Spirit of. Arguing, contention, all those ones, spirit of rejection, spirit of whatever. When God would speak to those demonic rubbish that, that is enslaving you, He will not deal with it by reminding them of His promises of Canaan. But Moses had to go and say to Father Pharaoh, let, God says, let my people go to go and worship me. Where? In the desert. God bless you in, in many ways, even in Egypt. But when you must come out of slavery, God, many times we want to get out of slavery, out of this, this circumstances that's enslaving us. And we are in circumstances, we pray to get out of Egypt into Canaan. God help us. You promised Canaan. You, God gave you promises to get out of Egypt into Canaan because that's what God said. 
But that's not how God deals with Pharaoh. He says, let them go to worship me in the desert. And then Pharaoh is dealing with them. Okay, I will let the men go to go to Canaan. No, I will let the men go to go and worship, but you don't take the wives and the kids. They said, no, then we're not going. Everyone must go. Everyone must go to worship God in the desert. Oh man, it's not like we want the desert <laughs> in that place to go and worship. But in some areas in your life, my brother, if you experience the desert, just understand it's the opportunity to worship God. It's the opportunity where you can see the miracles of God, the provision from heaven, the water from the rock. Hello? The fire of God to bring warmth, the cloud against the sun. Hello? into that place but focus on him focus on his presence i've taken you from egypt you've seen what i've done god said hey you've seen the miracles you've seen the miracles you saw my power and how you bore you i bore you on eagle's wings to myself i didn't bring you to canaan i brought you to myself because i have a desire and that is your father your he, father wants his children to be with him there's the biggest promise i will never leave you i will never forsake you because i'm a perfect father you go and present and represent the perfect father next one so elijah elisha once while some israelites were burying oh that was that's the wrong script is this one before that hallelujah but leave it there suddenly they saw a band of right Raiders, what, how do you say that? Yeah. So they threw the man's body into Elisha's tomb. When the body touched Elisha's bones, the man came to life and stood up on his feet. I just want to say, I think that those guys got the fright of their lives. <laughs> they want to bury this guy and he's, he's dead. And he touched the bones of Elijah that was dead. Elisha. And when he touched the bones of Elisha, then that guy came alive. Yo! That's anointing. Okay, but that was not the scripture supposed to be. The scripture is just before that. Bottom line, it has to do with the king that wanted to, uh, the king wanted to uh, attack the enemy. But then he first of all came to the prophet and he said, My father, the king called the prophet, my father. Must we attack? Must we attack? Hey, why must the king ask that prophet? Hello? The king can do what he wants, man. Now let's stand on the vision. He has the enemy in their hands. Because what, it, what happened? There were a lot of guys, a lot of enemy. And the prophet said, God opened their eyes. Oh, and opened the eyes of Gehazi and the, and the servants, and they saw, whoa, those who are with us are more than those who are against us, all the angels. But then afterwards, when these enemy came, the prophet said, just slanale, slanale, just put blindness over the enemy. And then the prophet led them all into the city, into Samaria. And then the prophet said to God, God, open their eyes. And all the enemy's eyes were opened. And then they saw, oh, we are now here. We are caught by Israel. And Israel had the enemy in their hands. But you know, I, they can stand on the promises of God. God is giving your enemy into your hands. You can slaughter them. Look what God has done. No, no. The king understood fathering. Like Jesus first went to the Father. Father, what are you saying? So the king came to Elisha as a father. Said, must we? And Elisha said, no. You cannot kill them. Even though the enemy is in your hands. You give him a feast. Feed them. Feed your enemy. Give him a feast. And send them away. What a ridiculous strategy. 
and the king did what the prophet said. Man, oh man, doesn't matter your authority. Walk in dependency towards the Father. Do we have the right one here now? Shall I kill them, my father? Shall I kill them? Do not kill them. Send them away. Okay. Prepare a great feast. You understand? He thinks I must be quick with the sermon, it seems to me. All right. Are you with me? No, I'm saying, you be a father to the nation. Be a father. And you know, if things are going wrong in government, it's because the church, listen, the church is not fathering the government. The church is not a father to the king of the nation. That's the problem. The church does not need to be the king. Hello? Joseph does not need to be in the place of Pharaoh. The same with Elisha. Does not be, need to be the king. And get that king out. But he needs to be a father to the king. So in government, even with the elections coming up, may the church rise up to be a father to government. A father to the legislative. A father to the provincial government, the father to people that standing in different wards and whatever you call it, in different communities. May the church rise up and start to pray for the guys in authority. Start to pray and give prophetic words, men. I say we must trust God in the near future that we're going to give some of these main peanuts in the pocky. You know, we're going to give them prophetic words. Let it be so. Go and see the Old Testament how many times yeah, how many times the prophet, he would tell the king, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. You will not do this. You will not do that. You remember the guy, the king, that sent the 50 for counsel, for counsel, not counsel from the prophet, counsel from these other spirits. God said to Elijah, he's sending that 50 there. Elijah comes and said, where do you think you're going? Fire from heaven, 50 gone. Go back home. The king, as yeah, the main guy, sent another 50. God to Elijah. He's sending some extra, uh, some 50 again. Coming. Where do you think you're going? Pshh. Fire from heaven, 50 gone. Pshh. Going home. The king is sending again another 50. Yo, how arrogant can you be? Elijah come again. The guy says, whoa, Elijah, just uh, give, me, give me a break. Um, it's not us, it's the king. Yeah, yeah, okay, I, I agree with you. Say, so it's the king, he. It's the king, he. Wants to go to that, to find the counsel from that demonic source. Okay, so Elijah went with, went to the king. Because you think, you thought of going there. Because you thought of going there, you will die. And the guy died. The king died. Amen. <laughs> Many times, leadership and political leadership can be rotten to the core. And they would seek counsel. They want counsel. And they will ask their ancestors. They will have you when you see these guys and they do some of rotten rubbish. You've seen that before? You've heard about that? Because they want counsel. What's the problem? Why is that rubbish? What is that rubbish doing there? Why are they seeking that, all those counsel? Because the church is not fathering the king. The church is not fathering the people in authority. It starts tomorrow with you. That you will allow the Father to counsel you. That you will allow Him to be your Father. And God will use earthly fathers and spiritual fathers with a lot of mistakes in your life. So that He can see, will you honor them because me, your perfect Father, said so. Because your perfect Father said so. 
Are you with me? Getting the right place, my brother, my sister, so that you can father some businesses, so that you can father some schools, so that you can father some education systems out there, so that you can father our men, your community, so that you can get some street kids and frequently give them a, a word, give them a word, and whether well, we give them, I don't know, not, not 10 rand because he can go for the tuck and I don't know what else. Give him a bread or give him something to eat. Give him an apple. And later they're going to know. Oh, they, when that car comes, hey, I'm going to get an apple. And when you open the door, they're going to tell you later what you are telling them. Yes, my father believes in me. Yes. And you think, ah, fake. But those words, Holy Spirit will use the word. Holy Spirit will remind them of the words of Christ. And if you've given them the word of Christ, then Holy Spirit can work in them in the night time, when they go to sleep, when they wake up. Because you've given that seed, where Holy Spirit will take the seed and let it come forth. Amen. Go and father your community. Are you still here? Okay. Do we have a next verse that could be right? Hopefully. What is the next one that we have? 2 Kings 13 verse 14. Now Elisha was suffering from the illness which, from which he died. Jehoaz, king of Israel, went down to see him and wept over him. My father, my father. Once again, this king, he cried. The chariots of horsemen and of Israel. Oh, that was what Elisha said to Elijah. Here's the king, and on the deathbed, this man is so desperate, this king is so desperate, and saying, this man of God, I need his counsel, I need him, I need him in my life. So the guys out there, if it's your death, there's people in the world, there's people with authority that's supposed to be there, oh, shh, but I need that man's counsel still in my life. That's how you're supposed to, supposed to make a difference. That you will be a father to kings. A father to people in authority. Don't be intimidated by what people know. Unless you decide that your God is less than that guy that knows a lot. But if you believe your God has the final say. He's the king of kings, lord of lords and everything will bow before him. And you know him and you know the father. Then you address the king. Then you address the king. My spiritual father's best friend at conferences, Dr. Tuni Bakari, in uh, every year that we go to Malaysia, this Dr. Tuni Bakari from Nigeria. My spiritual father is an Indian, his wife is Chinese, and his best friend is a uh, Nigerian. So, yeah, wonderful. And bottom line, a lot of at the conferences he would take some sessions and so one time he uh, God told him that shake from that from one of those feared guys you know those those shakes you know not a milkshake but a guy with a lot of authority that can just kill whoever he decides uh, his, his time is gone his time is over go and tell him so he went there and all the security and he said, no, I have a message from the king to the boss. And they let him through. <laughs> but he has a message from King Jesus. <laughs> so they allowed him to come in. He said, you make your life right with Christ, you and your family, and there's a future. You don't do that, you will die. And he walked out, they, they left him and did nothing to him and he just walked out. One week later, the whole family died in a, in a crash. But God gave the opportunity. God, before people are, people are dying out there, and if they didn't receive an opportunity, use me, use me, use me to even to speak to that sheikh, to even to you speak to that, whoever that guy is. Be a father to the people. Tell your neighbor, be a father to the people. Are you still here with me? Okay, the last one. For the sake of time. Genesis. So then, 
It was not you. This is Joseph. You who sent me here, that you sold me as a slave, man, my, your brothers. But it was God. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire house, household and ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and say to him, this is what your son Joseph says, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, don't delay what is this? Once again, here's a Joseph, and he's a father to Pharaoh. Pharaoh is the big shot. He is the man. He's the one to be feared. He's the one that are worshipped by the Egyptians. He's worshipped as a god, Pharaoh. And here's this man, the young guy, the brother the senior. Oh, come on. Our problem then. Is we have all the issues and offenses and, and things with one another because my brothers, I did nothing wrong, unfairly, they threw me in the pit and then they sold me as a slave. And what did they do to the heart of my father? And I long to see my father. And oh, there's time for offense till you die. Until you die, you will have your issue with somebody. You will have your issue with somebody. There will be a fight in here. And when the fight is in here, the enemy has a calm life. All the devils, they can just be rustig. They can just have a wonderful time. A wonderful time. But if you have the still voice of God, if you have the guidance of the Spirit, then the enemy will have war. Then there will be turmoil in the enemy's camp. But if you keep the turmoil in your heart with brothers and people where you are right and they are wrong. And you keep the turmoil in your heart. The enemy can be rustig. The enemy because they can have a, a wonderful time. <laughs> because the battle is in you with yourself. But you allow the still voice of God in you and the waters become calm in you the battle is not in you then the battle will be there in the enemy's camp do you hear me if you can remember this but if you're so easily offended so easily this just know somewhere there's a trigger point there's a trigger point with hell and with the enemy in such a way that for the enemy to sit back and eat his popcorn look at the comedy of your life where you have all these battles totally fooled by yourself and he can sit back and do his thing what about you enter the rest of God and not by power nor by might but by your spirit Lord and if you allow the spirit to guide you if you allow the spirit to guide you not your strength I'm not talking about the strength from hell your strength because you can have excellent strength you can do a thing man but if it's your strength, your power, not under the guidance of the Spirit, you're going to make a mess of your life. And it's so easy. Because those two are so close. Because they can have a right motive. But that doesn't mean I'm walking in dependency with God. I can have the right motive. Right motive. But it doesn't mean I'm led by the Spirit. So get the right motive, but then get into his presence. Like the king has the right motive. We need to deal with the enemy. I need to protect my people, so we must slaughter the enemy. Right motive, but still dependent. My father, speaking to the prophet, my father, must we attack them, yes or no? No, give him a feast. Give them a feast and send them back. But then they're just going to come and attack us again. The word says, then the enemy left them. I don't know if they were ashamed or the fear of God came upon them, but the enemy did nothing anymore. When the enemy, when you fed the enemy, you gave him a feast and sent them back, then the enemy left you. What a ridiculous thought pattern. But that's what happened. That's what happened. Are you still here? Are you still here? So you leave the issue. Then the devil will have an issue with one another. But they have no issues, the devil. 
No issue with you because you will destroy yourself when you keep the issue, Joseph, with your brothers that did you wrong. And then I go, in spite of everything, I go and I serve as if unto the Lord, faithfully in that master's house. And then the lady come for me, I run, and then they, she accuses me, and then the husband that I faithfully served believed her. Oh, it's time to be offended when you really give your life. And there's not a thank you, but they don't trust you. Wrongly accused and wrongly accused. And then what happened? Once I, I had a situation, I cannot say where and in what way, but um, and, uh, at that place I was accused of speaking to some people that were like a patient but patients but in the time that i studied medicine and worked at the place and they officially uh, accused me so i had to come in front of the council and i was at the council and um but before the time i went to the office of where all the records are of phone calls that went through all the places departments and I took that where is the proof that they were no phone call what they accused me of from that department and I put it on the table and say the whole accusation is false because here's the proof those days where they were no cell phones <laughs> only landlines okay so there's the proof but they still went on they still went on they still went on and they said we can fire you but we're going to give you a different job and they gave me a job i don't want to explain it here <laughs> but um it was horrific and when i went there and i had to do the job god said to me will you do it for me will you do it for me all I can say it was it involved cleaning up old women's 40 of them, me alone in the evening. Wonderful. That was the reward. <laughs> and I did nothing wrong. Oh, there were temptation, man. And I, God had to open up Joseph for me, and I didn't want to hear anything about Joseph at that time. Definitely not. But I had such some precious, 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 precious moments. Even with this one guy, I had to help him seven times in one evening. Oof. The seventh time I put him in the wheelchair, but I decided after I gave my life to Christ, in the beginning I could use a lot of words that's not good words, swear words. And so I realized, no, 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 no. And then I started to speak with respect and what God would say to the, uh, the people. And I put him in his wheelchair chair, and he said, Donkey Cornelius, like Cornelius Cornelius. The files, the, 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 what's a lair? A lair says the, that guy cannot speak at all. And I wrote in the file, only the love of God will help them. To open up and not be ashamed with what is happening to themselves hello so that was the reward after standing with certain things with god but god was testing god was testing oh man so sometimes in all of that my brother my sister joseph in jail and then joseph in jail wrongly accused and then the two guys, he interpreted the, dream, the dreams and he said to the guy that's going to the king's palace, remember me, at least just remember me and ask the king about me. Because I mean, I gave you interpretation accurately that actually part of saving your life. And then that guy forgot about him for two years. Come on, how are you going to feel? But then after the two years, when the king had a dream, oh, yeah, 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 this guy, he can interpret dreams from God. He's in jail. Yeah, he comes in. Oh, thanks. You forgot about me for two years, you know? You remember me now. 
No, that wasn't the heart of Joseph. <laughs> because he kept his heart pure. And from the prison to the palace. Let's say from prison to palace. Nothing changed in the heart of Joseph. His heart was equally set on God in the jail than in the palace. With each one total different temptations. But there he didn't seek the, 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 the position of the king. But he had a heart to be like a father to the king. And he became a father to the king. Show your father's heart to whoever. And God, you, will be ex you can be shocked in how God will start to use you. To show his father's heart to people in authority. People of influence in certain specific places. In this season, it's going to happen with the church. My brother, my sister, mark my words. I say to you prophetically in the nations. You will see more and more. How the counsel of God will come through mature men that didn't have issues with one another. That go, went beyond issues. That God put issues on their path. Where God organized. He said, it was not you who sent me here, but God. God organized that you throw me in the pit. God organized that you sell me like as a slave. God organized that I must go to jail so that in jail I will meet this, these two guys. So that that guy will go to the palace and that guy in front of Pharaoh will remember, oh, there's a man in jail. So that I can come from the jail to the palace and be a father to Pharaoh. Allow God to deal with all these stuffies. Allow God to deal with this oversensitive, immature, quickly offended heart and attitude. Okay? And allow God to send people sometimes that irritate you, frustrate you, and will feel like you want to murder them. Okay? Allow God to send them. Don't pray that. Okay? <laughs> Just count it all joy when you fall into various trials, according to James. Are you still here? You don't pray those people away. You don't pray that they will change. You don't pray that you will cope with them. You pray that you will grow, 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 so that you can be a father to people out there. A father, what ridiculous, pathetic father wants his son not to grow beyond his own life. That is a sick father. But any normal father, even out there in the world that doesn't serve God, he has one desire, that my son, my daughter, will grow beyond what I could achieve. That my son and my daughter will not make the mistakes that I made. That they will learn from my mistakes. But that they will build on what I've done right and learn from what I've done wrong. That is a father. Go and be a father out there. Because you are connected with your father. Amen.